We had a question from Nathan. He was indicated, he says, eight inches of bunk space is becoming increasingly common. Where can we see the research of the 12 inch of bunk space? Nathan, I guess I would say, I don't know as you're going to see the research on this. If you look at the Midwest Plan Service, you'll see that uh, those, uh, that bunk space is, is much smaller. I guess what I would say about that, though, that uh, publication was put out in 1986. We've had a lot of uh, changes in the size of the frame of our animals and the sizes of our animals right now. I'd also, the other thing I would say about that is you have to realize on that bunk space, I'm going to try to probably make it more generous with the fact that you may have some poles that may be on the outer edge of that uh, south, southern front of that building. If you take out the space that most of those poles will be taking, you may want to err on the side of allowing a little more bunk space. Carl had a question about what are the possibility of skylights in the roof to save on electricity. And Ron, I'm going to let you answer that. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not much of a believer in needing much for electricity for lights. Uh, during the winter time, I can have uh, light uh, clear to my north wall, my north wall curtain in, in, in the winter time during and 12 noon during the winter, I have sunlight uh, almost three quarters of the way back on my bed pack. In the summertime, uh, high noon, uh, the sunlight goes about eight, 10 feet into the building. And uh, so my call is you don't need uh, skylights. And it, I, if you need insulation for some reason for uh, poor ventilation or where your location is at or feel more comfortable in the insulating, uh, you'll be uh, covering up skylights. And usually my feeling with skylights are that they're a poor quality light that you're not letting as much in. And with that large opening on the south side, I think that that, that should really suffice enough for uh, enough light in the building. Nick, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, like like with an open south side, you got about as much light as you could, as you're gonna really get. It's gonna be a lot brighter light than the skylight. The skylights become with a dust or uh, anything or insulation covered up. There, it, you maybe are just gonna have another source when it rains. They might crack and leak. I mean, if if, if you try to insulate around them, you just might have another source of leaking, and that's gonna go on your bedding. That'd be the worst. That'd be the worst case scenario. Okay, we have a question from Jeff, and his question is, have you seen any manage these as a compost bedded pack as some of the dairies are doing? I guess I would say, Jeff, from the buildings that I've seen and experienced in the upper Midwest here, I, most of the beef buildings are not trying to manage them as a compost bedded pack. I've seen more of them, maybe that's the reason they've been going to a shallow bedded, is to reduce the temperature, especially in the summertime, we had one research trial we did where they were letting it build up in the summertime in the center, and we noticed one day when we were in, going in to sample and do some work on uh, emissions off of that bedded pack that the cattle were all standing around the outer edge. So I'm not aware of any beef barns right now that are trying to compost the bedded pack within the barn. Carl, another question from Carl, will increased ventilation through roof ventilators help reduce the condensation buildup? And Ron, do you have a question, uh, uh, comment that you'd like to make about condensation? For, for my building, I've never seen uh, any dripping or anything off the roof. Uh, and mine may be location related, that I'm so open, uh, out in the open, that I don't have any obstructions affecting ventilation that Still, day, it, uh, real foggy day, it doesn't uh, ever drip in my building. So I have not found any need to, or rust on the roof or dripping in the pen. Nick, anything you'd like to add about that? Well, like Beth and I, or we were, Aaron and I was just talking, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, there's a hill a little bit behind me. And then there's a lower valley below me, so maybe I'm just. And then there's there is trees around the back of me, so 
maybe I've definitely got a little bit poorer location for as far as uh, having 100% uh, with a, a very good clean air uh, out in the open where you're going to have a little breeze or whatever. We might be boxed in a little bit too much. Okay, and I've got Chris Cole. I'm going to have Chris comment about roof ventilators. What's your opinion about them? Um, in different locations where we have problems with the ventilation because of the terrain or or trees, I think I would would much rather add the uh, insulation in that case to keep the keep it down. Keeping the back curtain completely open is going to give you as much uh, ventilation as is possible with both the 27 feet open at the front plus the 16 feet in the back. You've got as much natural air as you can possibly put through it, and you don't have something that's going to weaken the roof. We do have another question that's talking about any reduction in insects and rodents with the monoslope beef barns. I guess I would say in about the four years of uh, research that we've done, Chris and I and Angie have done looking at it, um, I guess I wouldn't say from the standpoint of insects, you're looking at those temperatures in that bedded pack can tend to be uh, pretty hot. So I haven't seen a lot of problem with the insects. Regarding the rodents, we did mention on those curtains to make sure you build them so that they roll up from the bottom to avoid rodent damage. I wouldn't say that it's any more prevalent in a monoslope barn than it's going to be in any other kind of building that you're going to have. It, you're going to have to have rodent control on the, on the place. Okay, a question for uh, Nick and Ron. This comes, do the producers feel that they use the appropriate amount of bedding for the bed pack? Uh, do they have any seepage from that pack? And if so, how much? And so, uh, Nick, I'm going to let you start on this question. Okay, we don't we don't go with a direct bed pack. We clean out completely, but I wouldn't see we don't have no seepage. I mean, as soon as it starts getting damp and and a little bit out of control of being too wet, we immediately push it up and uh, put new bales back down. Okay, and Ron, do you have something you'd like to add on that? I run a deep bed pack. Uh, it's usually a foot to three feet deep. Uh, I, I have not seen any seepage. Um, the base of the bed pack is actually five and a half inches lower than the outside concrete, so that would contain any if it was. Um, I just have not seen any. I put at times I put a lot of bed, bedding down, and the cattle tend to eat the bedding and have not affected intake, cattle intakes or feed intakes at all, but they do like playing with it. They do like laying on it. After I get done bedding, they're pretty happy campers. They're down laying on it and thinking this is a nice, relaxed place to be, and uh, it also keeps uh, cattle a lot cleaner. Question from Michael asking about any foot problems or other animal health issues. I guess I would say right now in the upper Midwest, we are seeing some foot problems, not necessarily in a monoslope barn. We see it in, build, in uh, other places as well, other types of beef housing. There has been an increase I've seen in terms of digital dermatitis or hairy heel wart, uh, and some of the producers are using foot baths when they're running their animals through and processing them to take care of that. As far as other animal health issues, I don't know as I've seen any, but again, I'm going to let Ron, if you want to start and, and uh, share with us what you see in your barn. Well, right now I've got just short of the thousand head in my barn. I say I probably have one with a sore curved up toes or sore feet, and they're, I put them in at 500 pounds, and they're weighing probably 1,100 right now. So I've got gone quite a way through my feeding uh term right now and I just haven't seen much for foot problems not that you can't uh, every now and then you'll have a broken leg that a steer has been stepped on or I saw one running behind me jumping for joy kicking up his heels and he tripped over the bed pack and uh, he broke a leg doing it so I, I I've seen all kinds of crazy things uh, any excess uh, feed 
foot and feet problems, I haven't. And starting young calves and being on concrete and embedded pack that long, I got told that you would have those problems. And as of right now, I have not seen any what I consider excessive. So I've got one right now of 1,000. I think my chances are pretty low. Nick, what do you see up in, North, in South Dakota? I would say probably close to the same. Uh, the, we will have a foot problem if you had a consistent heavy south winds with rains where it just dumps the water into your pens. I mean, you, that as far as health-wise, I don't see no health problems. Uh, we do have maybe a foot problem right now. I've only got one that I've, that I've got in a pen that I've treated, and that's been the only one probably in the last uh, two weeks. Uh, we, you know, we do run 1,800, so it is a few more. But uh, as far as uh, it, it'll come and go in streaks, it'll, uh, if you have a lot of high humidity, foggy, rainy south winds, where the whole month of April it rained and snowed combination for about 50% of the days through the month of April, we, we did have probably seven or eight of them that we did treat through that month of April, uh, especially the first two to three weeks of April. Now the last three weeks we've had one and usually you give them a treatment and they, they go back to their pen within about a day. Ron, is there anything that you still would like to share that we didn't get covered? Maybe the fact of what weather does uh, uh, to these barns. These barns aren't 100% against weather. Uh, rain, snow uh, still has effect. High humidity still has effect. Uh, low humidity has an effect on the barns and how you manage them. It's just not a turnkey, um, and it doesn't. It takes labor. It takes management to run them efficiently. And if you do those type of things and can manage the animal, and animals are smart, those cattle are smart animals. They they tell you a lot of good things, and uh, they'll usually tell you how you're how they're feeling. And uh, weather is a big factor in it. And these go buildings go a long ways in helping con control that. Nick, is there anything you'd like to share? I guess Ron pretty much covered it. Uh, when you look at a building, you kind of think, well, if you just get them under the roof, they're pretty much controlled. Uh, there's a lot of management that's got to go behind the controlling. It's a uh, it's, uh, every morning, every night uh, feeding to watch over the cattle and bedding to keep them comfortable. There's nothing more important than a calf that's dancing around in the bed. And, when he's doing that, you know he's feeling good and you feel a lot better because then you don't have to pull him out of the pan. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have a question from Carl. He was saying, do you know of any maintenance guidelines for these barns? Um, I guess I would say we just recently, um, through the Midwest Plan Service, there was a, a publication that was put out that's entitled Cattle Feeding Buildings in the Midwest. That can be ordered from the Midwest Plan Service. It does specifically talk about uh, and focus in on some of the monoslope barns, some of the ways that they're managed and how they're designed and how they're built. So I would encourage you to go online to the Midwest Plan Service and order that. Um, we will also be having, in terms of information about the monoslope barns, there are two web pages that are available that are now linked at the Livestock, Poultry, and Environmental Learning Center that's on the e-extension website one that covers basically general information about monoslopes. There's another one on that uh, page that will talk about the current research project that we're undergoing. So I would direct you to, to both of those uh, websites as well. They're asking about any concerns about concrete coatings for the barn floors. Chris, do you have uh, any comments? The, the, the barns that are going up here are going to be rock rock concrete with normally 12 inch or less uh, diamond shaped grooves in them. As far as putting coatings on them, I'm afraid the coatings don't last very long when you're putting uh, heavy equipment on them and these things should last 